Hello ladies and gentlemen. We are going to take a look at something called a degenerate case or degenerate cases of different conic sections. Here we have Beavis and Butthead, uh, maybe a little before your time, but probably the most famous degenerates that I could think of. Let's take a look at what a degenerate, sec uh, degenerate case is of a conic section. In this video you can see how we get circles by slicing conic sections. Uh, if we move the plane up and down, we get circles. Now I can do the same thing with a circle formula. So take a look at this circle here. This is the general form, ax squared plus cy squared dx cy. And I can get the same effect by just changing some of the values. I'm going to change f and I can get a circle that gets bigger and smaller. If we let this video play a little more, it'll show us a degenerate case. So there it is, the circle no longer is a circle. There is a point when the slice of the cone, of the double cone, only makes a point. So let's take a look at this circle. We're gonna change the value of f here and we're going to let it get smaller and smaller and smaller. And we're going to see if we can get a degenerate case from this. So it looks like we're at 3, we're at 4, getting closer. And it looks like the circle has disappeared. It seems like something happens when f equals 5. So let's take a look at this formula then. This general formula, ax squared plus cy squared dx plus cy plus f. Let's take a look at what's going on when a is 1, c is 1, d is 4, e is negative 2, and f is 5. When the equation is written like this, it's a little hard to tell what's going on with this circle. So let's go ahead and try to rewrite this thing so it's in standard form of a circle. Standard form is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Let's try to get it to look like this. If we can do that, we might get a sense of what the heck is going on with this degenerate circle. To start things off, I group the x stuff together. I group the y stuff together. So I'm going to be completing the square here. I'm gonna move the negative five to the other side. I have to add numbers to complete the squares. This is completed with a four. This is completed with a one. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. And we continue. This perfect square trinomial becomes x plus 2 squared. So far, so good. This becomes y minus 1 squared. And on the right side, negative 5 plus 4 plus 1 is just 0. So what do we know about this circle now? Apparently, the center of this circle is at negative 2, 1. And the radius of this circle appears to be zero. So what do you call a, um, a circle with radius of zero? A circle is a collection of points. It's a locus of points. It is all the points a certain distance from a center. If we look at this equation though, there's only going to be one point that satisfies this equation. There's only one point that belongs in this locus. We have something squared plus something squared is equal to zero. But a squared number is either always positive or zero. You can't have something squared equal to a negative number. So the only thing that we can, the only point that's part of this locus is the center, negative two, one. If we plug negative two, one into this formula, we get negative 2 plus 2 squared plus 1 minus 1 squared equals 0. And what we end up with is the only point that satisfies the locus. 0 squared plus 0 squared equals 0. So this is not really the equation of a circle. This is the equation of just a point. In terms of a locus of points, there's only one point that satisfies the given setup. Let's compare this to a more standard circle, like this guy. So this guy's got the same center at negative 2, positive 1. 
it's going to have a lot more points that are part of this locus. In order to plug it back into my graph, I'm just going to multiply this out real quick. x squared plus 4x plus 4, y squared minus 2y plus 1 equals 25. Combine like terms, get everything in the right order. 4x minus 2y, we've got 1 plus 4, that's going to be negative 20. So, let's take a look. So here's that circle, we have 1, 1, 4, negative 2, 20. That's what we had here, 1, 1, 4, negative 2, 20. And we get a circle whose center is at negative 2, 1. Negative 2, 1 right there. So let's just take a look at some of the points on this circle. As you can see, we have a whole collection of points, infinite number of points. Let's just pick a couple here. It appears as though the point 1, 5 is part of this locus of points and so is the point 2, 4. So 1, 5 and 2, 4 apparently satisfy the given equation. We can confirm that both of these points are part of the circle just by plugging them in. Uh, if we plug in a 1, we get 3 squared plus, I'm using the original equation here, 1 plus 2 is 3, uh, 5 minus 1 is 4, and sure enough, we get 9 plus 16 is 25. So sure enough, that point is on the circle. It is part of the locus of points. And same thing is going to happen here. 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. We get the same numbers just in reverse. This is also a point on the circle. So this is not a degenerate case. We go up here, previous example. There was only one point that satisfied the given equation. Yeah, you can think about it as a circle with radius zero. It's all of the points that are zero units away from the center. And that only leaves you with the center. Let's take one look at another example here. This is not a degenerate case. This is uh, an impossible case. Yeah, let's go back to our circle here. If I slide F all the way over, I'm going to get a degenerate case right around there. And then there's all these values of F up here for which there are no equations at all. It's an empty locus of points. There is not a single point that satisfies the given setup. So let's just take a look at one of those. X plus 2 squared plus Y minus 1 squared equals negative 1. I don't have to go into a great amount of detail there. We have something squared plus something squared equals a negative number. And that won't happen. Something squared is always going to be 0 or positive. This is also going to be 0 or positive. It will never be negative. You can't add two things that are 0 or positive and get a negative number. No way, Jose. So that's an empty locus. It describes no points. An ellipse also will gen degenerate into a point right about there. I don't need to show you the math behind that, though. It's very similar to how a circle degenerates into a circle, or to a point, rather. Let's take a look now at how a parabola degenerates. So a parabola is made by a slice um, that has the same angle as the side of the cone is essentially what this is saying. So let's take a look how a parabola might degenerate. So here is the slice. The slice has the same angle as the side of the cone. And when we get to a certain spot, the parabola degenerates. And it just turns into a line. We can watch it finish its journey here. Down it goes. The slice creates a new parabola. It gets wider as we move down the cone, narrower until it degenerates to a line. So let's take a look at how to degenerate a parabola. Here we have the general form of a parabola with vertex hk. And p is included in the formula. That's the distance from the focus to the vertex. Uh, here's a specific one y minus 3, so I can actually write this out, multiply everything by 4, expand stuff, and I get a formula 
There's the multiply by 4. Distribute the 4. Expand the x minus 2 squared. Combine like terms. Move stuff around. Divide everything by 4. And you have a formula with coefficients 1, negative 4, negative 1, and 7. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Here is the parabola with coefficients 1, negative 4, negative 1, and 7. The vertex of this parabola appear to be at 2, 3, and we can confirm that in our formula, which was given in the standard form, 2, 3 is right there in the formula. So everything matches up very nicely. If you'll notice, there is no C value in the formula. C is usually the co uh, coefficient associated with y squared. There is no y squared in this parabola formula, only x squared. Now let's watch this thing degenerate. I can slide a left and right, I get real skinny, real skinny, or if I move it to the left a little bit, it opens up, it opens up, and there comes a point where it just flies open. And what we end up with is the line, the degenerate line. It's going to happen when a is equal to zero. So let's take a look at why a parabola degenerates to a line at a equals zero. At a equals zero, zero x squared, if we were to rewrite this, be negative 4x minus y plus 7 equals 0. That is no longer a parabola. We are down to only x and y. That is actually the line y equals negative 4x plus 7. It's a linear equation with slope negative 4, y-intercept 7. The last degenerate case I'd like to look at is for the hyperbola. So let's take a look at what happens when we have a degenerate hyperbola. The slice comes together and it forms two intersecting lines. Let's see what the formula does to get two intersecting lines like this. We're going to take a look at this hyperbola. I know it's a hyperbola because the coefficients a and c are different values. That's a 1 right there, 1y one squared. That different values, different signs. They're different values and different signs. When they're the same values, it's a circle. When it's different values, and they're the same sign, it's an ellipse. But what we have here is different values, different signs. That's a hyperbola. Let's take a look at it. There it is. It's a good looking hyperbola. So let's see what we need to do to get this thing to degenerate into something else. So moving A causes this thing to get a little narrower. Let's see if we can get those two intersecting lines. It seems to happen right there. Oh wow, that's neat. So it goes from hyperbola intersecting lines to hyperbola to ellipse somewhere in there is a circle but let's take a look at the intersecting lines it appears to be at a equals negative 1 we replace the negative 5 with a negative 1 and let's move things around a little bit to try to get two intersecting lines I'm gonna move all the X stuff to one side it turns out the right side of the equation with the X stuff is a perfect square trinomial so we get something squared equals something squared. Take the square root of both sides. We get y equals plus or minus x minus 2. This gives us two linear equations, y equals x minus 2 and negative x plus 2, which is what we have in the graph.